This is Battlefront Scorpion Scimitar Troop for Team Yankee. I've always loved the Scorpion, so I've been waiting to review this kit. The Scorpion is a light tank used for reconnaissance in British forces. More than 3,000 of this tiny tank were produced. The back of the box shows the exploded assembly diagram. This shows the assembly with the optional guns, the 76mm gun for the Scorpion, and the 30mm rod and cannon for the Scimitar. There's also optional stowage provided. The kit contains four plastic sprues, a decal sheet and four unit cards. It also says there's a tank commander sprue, but the commander is actually included on the plastic vehicle sprues. Let's open the box and look at the plastic. All the parts for a plastic scorpion are on a single sprue of medium grey plastic. The first thing that strikes you is that the scorpion is tiny. There's good detail here and the mould is nice and sharp, the sort of thing we've come to expect from Battlefront plastic kits. If we look closer we can see the two different guns, the shorter 76mm gun and the longer 30mm cannon. In scale terms the cannon is a bit chunky, but I suspect that's to maintain durability on the table. You can see the turret and the commander figure here too. As well as the kit parts there are a number of jerry cans and optional stowage boxes. From the look of the parts this will build into a great kit. Here are the unit cards, there are two for scorpion and two for scimitar. The decals are some vehicle serials and British flags as well as various formation signs in blue, yellow and white. Let's get on with the build. I'm starting with the lower hull, so snip this part free from the sprue. Clean up here is pretty simple but required to make sure that the track pieces fit flush. The one piece track pieces are next, snip these off the sprue. Road wheel detail is good and so are the tracks. Be careful when cleaning these up that you don't take some track detail in any places it will be noticed. The tracks are keyed so they can only go on the right way. These posts fit into slots on the hull. Next comes the upper hull. Cut it free from the sprue. Clean up here is important as these surfaces will be visible on the completed kit. Emery boards are my tools of choice to get a nice finish here. Once the hull piece is ready it just glues onto the lower hull assembly. There are some posts on the back to aid alignment. Press firmly to get a good fit. The rear hull piece slots into place. There are chamfered edges here so press it in well to avoid gaps. The last compulsory part of the hull assembly is the exhaust on the right side of the hull. Check the instructions for the orientation here. The exhaust is at the top up against the main hull. There are guides here to help you get the alignment right. Next we move on to the turret. Snip the upper and lower turret pieces from the sprue, then just glue together. You can see there's a gap here. There's a positioning nub behind the smoke dischargers. I found I had to file the left hand projections on the turret that fit in here to get a good closure on the turret. The smoke dischargers hide any issues from filing this down and makes the turret fit without a join. Next, select the gun for the variant you want to build. The stubby gun is the 76mm gun for the Scorpion, and the longer gun is the 30mm cannon for the Scimitar. People with more patience than me could probably magnetise these so you could swap guns. I value my sanity too much to try this. Here's the finished Scimitar turret. To finish it off I glue in the turret peg. I'm using the commander figure here, so I've positioned the hatch open. There are some other optional parts like stowage boxes for the turret if you like, but that's the main parts assembled. And here's the final result. These are tiny. The level of detail is great and they really look fantastic. The Scimitar's gun is a bit out of scale, but this is a current trend with Battlefront releases and I'm sure it makes them more durable table miniatures. These are a great addition to the British forces in Team Yankee. I can't wait to build a Scorpion as well. Let's look at the Scorpion family. The FV-101 Scorpion entered service with the British Army in 1973. It was the first vehicle in the CVRT Combat Vehicle Reconnaissance Tracked series by Alvis. This light tank was used mainly in the reconnaissance role. In the end, more than 3,000 Scorpions were built, both for British forces and for export. Scorpion was light, just over 8 tonnes, and small, coming in just over 5 metres long and 2 metres tall. Initially Scorpion was powered by a Jaguar 4.2 litre petrol engine, the same engine used in some Jaguar cars. 
This was later replaced with a Cummins or Perkins diesel power pack. The lightweight and powerful engine gave Scorpion a good turn of speed. Wikipedia credits it with a world record speed for a production tank of 82 km an hour. Armour protection was a half inch of aluminium plate, proof against some small arms and shell splinters but not much else. Scorpion was armed with the L23A1 low velocity 76mm gun, which could fire a variety of ammunition types including HESH, HE, smoke and even canister rounds. Secondary armament was a 7.62mm coaxial machine gun. The turret mounts smoke grenade launchers for defensive smoke screens. The most common variant of Scorpion is the FV-107 Scimitar. This is armed with a 30mm Radon cannon in place of the 76mm gun. Other Scorpion variants include the Spartan APC, the Sultan Command and Control Vehicle, the Samson ARV, Samaritan Ambulance, and the Striker anti-tank guided missile carrier seen here. This was armed with a five-box launcher for the Swingfire anti-tank guided missile. Scorpion was retired in British service in 1995, but some variants continue in British and overseas service. Let's see how the Scorpion works in Team Yankee. Here's the unit card for the Scorpion recce troop of the Queen's Dragoon Guards. The troop is a tank unit with infrared, scout and spearhead rules. Infrared means Scorpion can roll two dice for night visibility and choose the highest score. The spearhead rule means this reconnaissance unit can move before the game begins to increase the player's deployment area. Scout means the team has gone to ground unless it shoots or assaults. Courage, morale and remount are all 4+. Plus. Skill and assaults are 3+, plus, but counterattack is 5+. Plus. These are scout units and won't stick around for a hard slogging assault. Scorpions are hit on a 4+, plus and the armour is 2 on the front and 1 on the sides and top. These can't go toe-to-toe -to -toe with real tanks, so use them from ambush. Tactical move is a pretty limited 6 inches or 15 centimetres, but the other dash speeds show the speed of this light and nimble tank. It crosses on a 3+. plus. The L23 76mm gun has a range of 24 inches or 60 centimetres, with a halted rate of fire of 2 and moving of 1. Anti-tank is a respectable 14 with a 2 plus firepower, so it can do some damage. It has heat, high explosive anti-tank, so target armour isn't increased over 16 inches range. But it does mean the damage is affected by bazooka skirts, BDD, Cobham and ERA armour special rules. Smoke means Scorpion can shoot smoke ammunition to blind enemies. The sneak and peek rule means it can increase its tactical speed to 10 inches or 25 centimetres if it isn't firing the main gun. Scimitar's stats are essentially the same except it loses the smoke and heat rules. The 30mm L20 run rod and cannon has a 24 inch or 60 cm range, with a halted rate of fire of 3 and a moving rate of 2. Anti-tank is 10, ok for soft targets and light armour but not really able to touch tanks except with side shots. Firepower is also reduced to 5 plus, so less chance of beyond armour effects if you do get a penetration. As I said, I've been waiting for this kit to come out and I wasn't disappointed. It builds up to a great little kit. At only 4 points for a 4 vehicle troop for these light reconnaissance tanks, I'm sure I can fit them into my British forces for Team Yankee. I'm off to build the rest of them. I'm also tempted to kit bash the M113s with Scorpion turrets to make an Australian fire support vehicle. I'd better buy another box.